Thank you, Inat. Somehow I was surprised to discover there are quite a few people that didn't get yet the Nobel Prize. <laughs> I went to the airport and one of them said he doesn't want to get one. That's President Bush. But he was, uh, I'm afraid, a minority among other people. Getting the Nobel Prize is really calling the attention of people that you meet a person which is worthwhile listening to him. And it is because of it that we are so grateful to you for coming. We need your messages. We need your advice. You are independent people. You don't owe to any establishment or government or other constraints. And it's refreshing to see people who are free from prejudices and free from any other restrictions and can give us a message. I myself am running in between all those people who got the Nobel and didn't get the Nobel, but uh, I know that the interest to listen to you is extraordinary, extraordinary. To have at lunchtime such a group of people is really something outstanding. And we really are listening, waiting to listen to your message. I have a friend in the Middle East, our tongues are stronger than our ears. We are very good on talking, I'm not so sure that we are very good to listening. And this is an occasion to listen more than to talk. The floor is yours. Your messages will be highly appreciated. And really, we would like to have this occasion as occasion of the highest expression of freedom. The freedom of speech, the freedom of thought, the freedom of consideration, and a new freedom, a freedom to watch the future. I apologize for not being able to stay all the time, but I wouldn't give up the occasion again to thank you from the depth of my heart for being here and trying to answer a very anxious and interested people that would like to listen to your independent and profound views about the future. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Please welcome this very distinguished group of people.